This video is not sponsored by anyone. I am not promoting anything. I just want to have a serious talk about game assets and asset flip games and should you use assets or not in your game. So let's talk about it. Welcome. I'm Brandon. My wife, Nikki, and I make videos about all things game dev. We hope you enjoy. And I do feel like this topic is worth breaking down into two categories, art and tools. And let's start by talking about tools because I feel like they're a little less divisive. So the question is, should you use asset tools to help you develop your game and why or why? Why not? If you're not sure as to whether or not you should do this, correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, okay? But I feel like the only reason that you would be hesitant to use tools to help you develop your game is because you feel like you have to do everything yourself. And I can understand this really, really well. It can feel like if you didn't develop every single aspect of the game yourself, then somehow the game wasn't totally made by you and the value of the project in your eyes is a little bit diminished. And where I land with this decision kind of depends on where you are at in your game development journey because it really does depend and I know everybody hates that answer but that is the truth in a lot of instances. So if you are mostly in the learning phase of game development, you're near the start, you're just dinking around, you're just figuring things out and you're not really ready to devote years or months of your time to create an entire project just yet because you're still learning. If you're in that phase then it's probably beneficial for you to do as much as you possibly can on your own because at this stage Age, doing things on your own is probably going to align with your goals. So a shortcut that you can use to help answer whether or not you should do this very quickly for yourself is, does this align with my goals right now? Because at least in my mind, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be utilizing a whole bunch of external tools that you paid for when you're just figuring out how to use the engine or you're just learning how to code and you're just really in the beginning stages. If your goal is to learn code or to learn how to make particles or learn how to make shaders or how to make levels or or how to animate your characters, you're gonna learn faster if you narrow down your scope of what you have to learn because external tools, you have to learn how to use those as well. So keep it narrow. Here's what I'm learning right now. I'm learning the engine. I'm learning code. I'm learning animation. But if your goal is to publish a game on Steam in the next six months, then you see where I'm going with this, right? The whole playing field just changed. Now your goal isn't learning. Now your goal is to create an experience that is packaged as a product that people can download. So in this scenario, it makes perfect sense to utilize outside tools to help make your game the best experience that it can possibly be and help you do it more quickly. And you can disagree with me on this. That's totally fine. This is just my opinion. And I know that some of you are going to because old Brandon certainly would be arguing with what I'm saying right now. And that's because if I'm using tools, that takes some of the pride out of the equation of making a game. I didn't make it all. It feels like a shortcut. It feels like I cheated. Something feels off about it or wrong about it. And here is my perspective on that mindset. Your ego is your enemy. Studios use external tools all of the time. AAA studios will often contract outside experts. They hire consultants. They use market research. Very, very, very few people who do this, they make video games and they do it well and they earn a really good living at it, very few of those people do it completely alone. There is no need for you to do that. It is not necessary. And you're not a AAA studio, you're an indie developer. So you might not be able to afford hiring someone to help you code some complicated system, but I'm willing to bet that you can afford to spend 20 or $30 on an asset that could potentially save you a whole month's worth of work. So does buying the asset align with your goals? Keep asking yourself that question. If you are making the work of making a game harder on yourself on purpose because it will feel better at the end, or because it doesn't feel like cheating, or you'll get the pride that you did it all yourself, then you are actively working against your own goals if that is the case. That's just how it is. If your goal is to create a game and sell it on Steam in a certain time period. I recently bought an asset that handles my procedural level generation in my game. I probably saved myself weeks, if not honestly more than a month's worth of work by buying that asset. And I spent like 20 bucks on it. Is a month worth of my time sitting and coding things out, is that much of my time worth 20 bucks? Um, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> there is no right or wrong way to make a game. Keep that in mind. This is just my two cents. Do whatever you want to do. But making games is already hard enough. It's so hard to make games successfully. I just feel like why make the process harder on yourself by not utilizing all of these tools that you potentially have at your disposal? Now, 
let's talk about art because art is another matter entirely. And so I do want to be careful with what I say here because this, if you do this part wrong, this is what's going to get your game labeled as an asset flip. Nobody's going to see the tools that you use to help you create your game. That's just for you. But art, everybody sees. And Steam is filled with asset flip games. Let's just call it like it is. And you don't want that. You don't want that for your game. Asset flip games do not sell well. It can harm the reputation of your studio. People might not want to buy games from you in the future. So you want to be really, really careful with this. So with all of that being said, my opinion on this is still exactly the same as it was with the tools. But you have to be smart about it. You do not need to create every single art asset yourself. But there are definitely some things in your game that you want to be unique, like your character, enemies, certain landmarks in the game. Having unique music really, really helps. But it depends on your game, and it depends on the genre of your game. Also depends on whether you're working in 3D or 2D. It is a lot harder to get away with purchased assets when you're working on a 2D game. It's actually really funny. When I think about this, I think back to some advice that I heard from Blender Guru. He was working on just a render for a static image. It was a realistic looking kitchen that he was working on. But I specifically remember him saying, buy some assets, accumulate a library of assets. There's like 150 tiny little things all over the counter. You do not need to model all of those yourself. Buy a library of assets and import those. This advice applies to games really well too, I think, particularly with things like vegetation assets, environment assets, just trees, flowers, various plants, rocks, fences, buildings, things like this that just kind of blend into the background. All sorts of assets like that. You do not need to create all of those assets yourself. It's not necessary. You can buy these things and you can save yourself the time of having to create probably dozens and dozens of various assets. But you need to choose your art assets wisely because if you have a whole mishmash of different styles that don't blend well together, it's going to look weird and it's going to look like an asset flip game and people are going to judge it very, very hard because of that. It doesn't matter how fun your game is to play. When it comes to games, people do judge a book by its cover. Your game has to look good or people are not going to be interested in playing it. Particle systems are a really great use case as well. I've created hundreds, if not probably thousands of particle systems from scratch. But for the first time with our game Samurado that we're working on right now, you should wishlist by the way. That's a really great way to support us right now. But while I was working on Samurado, I was just starting to create an explosion particle system and I had so much to do and I was a little bit stressed and I was kind of just like I don't have time for this. I went to the asset store, I found a particle pack, I downloaded it, drag and dropped it in there and boom, explosion particle system. And honestly, I'm not going to lie, it's probably better than anything I could have made from scratch anyways. Now I've got this gorgeous library of particle systems that I can use in any project in the future. And just for this one particle system, I probably saved myself an hour of work if not a little bit more. Really small example, but stuff like this adds up. This was after all, just one particle system. So for me, I ask myself, does this align with my goal right now? My goal is to publish Samurado to Steam in as polished a state as possible, as fast as possible. I don't really care if I made the particle systems myself or not. What matters is that they look good, and that they fit with our current art style, and that doing this saved me an hour or two of work. Let me give you one more reason why I think using assets is a good idea. And this is an example that completely changed how I look at my time and how I look at money. The idea comes from an audiobook that I listened to, written by a really rich guy. It's called The Millionaire Success Habits. He was not talking about game development, but the principle still applies, I think. So some really, really successful entrepreneurs attend what are called mastermind meetings. In this one particular mastermind meeting, there was a guy who made an absolute fortune in real estate, but he said that his office was a complete disaster. And what he said at the mastermind meeting was, I'm not gonna do any more real estate deals until I get my act together and I clean up my office. And the guy who was leading the mastermind meeting basically said, don't bother, you've been messy your whole life, that's not going to change now. What you should do instead is hire someone to organize your office for you and use the time that you save that you would have been spending cleaning your office, use that time to do another real estate deal. So in terms of game development, if you can spend $50 to save yourself an entire month, of development time, how is that not worth it? It's just something that makes sense to me. I assume that if you are making games and you're wanting to publish to Steam, that you're hoping to earn more than $50 a month. You're not just buying an asset, you're buying yourself that time back for 50 bucks. That's all I got. Let me know what you think about buying assets down in the comments below and like the video if you liked.
Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yonduk, Zandra Kessler, Darren Perrine, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Waite, Couch, and Christopher Nichols, as well as our Early Access patrons, Zayoma, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Audio Games, Yon, Donnie Briggs, Alexander Prestes, and Darren Cook. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get Early Access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.